All right, Rob, let's get into it. Uh, last night, big game. Uh, I was, I credit, it shouldn't be, but in today's day and age of super duper low management in the NBA, I credited LeBron and AD for playing last night on a back to back. Oh my gosh, a back to back. The, the scary, frightening, treacherous back to back. But they played through it and, uh, Get an A for effort, certainly LeBron, who was fantastic in the second half. But uh, they got bludgeoned again, Rob, by the Clippers. The 11th straight victory for the Clippers over the Lakers. Tyron Lue, the head coach for the Clippers, has never lost to the Lakers. The score was 125-118, and they led from the jump. I mean, they jumped out to a huge lead and never looked back. Lakers really never challenged. Um, Rob, what did you learn from that game last night? Uh, that the Clippers are better without Paul George. No, <laughs> um, I, I don't. I, that was just a weird game. You know, as as we've said on this show a million times, AD should have 15 points when he when he puts on his sneakers. Like he finished with 17. Yeah, and I mean, boards. Chris, that's just just a bad. I, and I understand that the Clippers have a couple of big guys and, you know, and they, and they right. doubled them and, and they, right. they, they made him work and they gave him different looks and I give them credit. Ty Lue is a fantastic coach and they, and they did something. They did a good job. Am yeah. I right? On AD yep. with their big guys, but, but still. Uh, and then, you know, I know LeBron made the excuse about the travel and I get it and the road trip. If it was all that, then, then, then you couldn't go. Don't play. I mean, like, I just can't get over, like, guys have played back-to-backs. Guys have had long stretches. It was an important game, Chris, to be the difference between being in the playoffs and being in the play-in. They had something to right. play for. The Clippers don't have their second-best player. I mean, I, could you muster one? Could you <laughs> dig down deep? I'm just, like, well, I, let me, I, I, I hear you. And, and let me first give LeBron some credit. Um because I agree with a lot of what you're saying. After, Rob, his first half, I've never seen LeBron play that poorly. He was out of it. He was terrible. I mean, he was losing his dribble. He was half four turnovers. What do you have, six turnovers? Four Total. turnovers in the first half. Three points in the first half on one for six shooting. And, you know, some people might point back to Dallas in the finals in 2011. In those games, he was just passive. He was just, like, mentally out of it. But this game, he just was playing badly. Like, he just, just, it wasn't that he was passive. It was just that he wasn't any good. And I'm going to give him major credit because, because in the second half, Rob, he scored 30 points. He was phenomenal. And what I saw in him, Rob, and I've never questioned the quote-unquote dog in him, but a lot of people have. Let's keep it real. A lot of people think LeBron doesn't have that killer instinct. I, I've seen it before. Like I said, I've never questioned it. But I saw it for real yesterday. I saw it, and I get it. They lost. They didn't even come close to winning. But, Rob, remember, and, and our, our buddy, Stephen A. Smith, said, Rob, a couple of years ago on first take that he was told by somebody that Kawhi Leonard was like, why is LeBron afraid to guard me? Or when's LeBron going to guard me? You remember hearing that from right, Stephen Right, I do remember that. Yeah. yeah, I do. Well, LeBron at 38 guarded Kawhi and did a good job. And Kawhi guarded him and couldn't do anything with LeBron in the second half. I thought LeBron, Rob, just the look on his face, the, the, uh, the attack mode that he was in, at the rim, the attack mode he was in and trying to guard Kawhi, I'm going to give him credit because I thought it looked to me like he said to him, he was embarrassed by his first half performance. It looked to me like he just like thought to himself, like, there's no way I can play that badly. Like, I, like he was embarrassed. And to his credit, he came out and played well. Now, that said, Rob, I agree with you. And Skip Bayless said it today, Rob, on first on uh, Undisputed. He said, you know, when he started covering the NBA, well, he started in the 70s, but when he was really covering the NBA right. uh, intensely in the 80s, he was like, 
they didn't even talk about back to backs. It, was, it like, wasn't a conversation, it wasn't even a, right? And when and I'm sure with you, and when I started covering in the '90s, the mid '90s, right. for me well, it was the '80s. You were the '90s, yeah. and and skip we the never 70s. even thought about back to back. You just played the schedule, right? It was like <laughs> I mean, they must have. I don't know how many, but it was just right. It was like no big deal. It was never used as an excuse. It was never like, oh, we're gonna be in trouble. You know, we're on a back to back. Oh, here's, I mean, a, here's a schedule loss like they do now. Right, oh, right. and that's what, loss. see, that's what I didn't like to hear. Because, Rob, what do we usually hear? You hear from athletes, like, they they don't make the excuse. They just say, you know what, no excuses. I mean, we, we suited up. We got to be better. I would have rather heard that than it's a schedule loss. We well, didn't schedule loss. Were the, were the previous 10 schedule losses to the Clippers? That, right. It, it just doesn't make any sense. That's 11 now. What, what's the excuse? And you needed that game, a schedule, the schedule. So why did you play if you knew it was a schedule loss, Chris? Right. That's a you good point. You should have saved yourself. Why put yourself in jeopardy? Which, which the bottom line is they didn't. You know, they went out there thinking they're going to be able to win. And it, it backfired on them. They, they got beat. But don't come back after the fact and say it's a schedule loss. Because if you, you're absolutely right, Rob, especially with two guys that are injury prone as the older LeBron and AD period, if you knew, we really don't stand a chance. They've been, they haven't played in four days. We're coming off a of back-to-back. We had some rough travel in Utah. Then you just wouldn't have played. And so that's what I didn't want to hear. You mentioned AD, Rob. Look, the Clippers do a good job against AD. Yeah, and you, you talked about they, Ty Lue double Ty Lue. Him. I mean, I give yep. him credit, Chris. There's no doubt. Doubt. And he on Rob, in his three games against them this year, he only averages 22 and 9. Now, those are good numbers. AD's a great player. and But I'll live with AD giving me 22 and 9 if I'm the opponent. I can live with that. What I can't live with is 34 and 15. And Rob... In addition to the double teams on defense, I think one reason the Clippers give the Lakers some trouble is because Zubach, and I'm not, look, he's not a great player, but you know the what Lakers he is. The Lakers never should have gotten rid of him. That was nah, a he's a nice, he's a nice, solid center. And what he is, Rob, is he's a tough, uh, strong uh, guy that hustles, and he plays at the rim. And Rob, for the longest, what has AD said? I don't want to be a center. I'm not a center. I don't want to play five. That's why. He, he don't mind playing five against Draymond and right. Jokic. And guys and the guys dominate. that are going to be outside. You know, they're going to all play on the perimeter like they're forwards anyway. But it's the guys that when you got to bang with them um, mo- every other possession or every possession, and they're going to put that body on you. And all of that, that's what AD doesn't like. And Zubas looked like a freaking all-star last night. He wasn't, not a superstar, but an all-star. He had 17 points, 13 rebounds, dunking on cats. Like, that, I think, is a reason that he AD doesn't, like, dominate the Clippers. And finally, Rob, the, the other thing I learned from last night, and, and I'm still, I'm not writing off the Lakers because they got two of the top 10 players in the league. And the West is wide open. So I'm giving them a shot. But, Rob, it makes you look, you know, they, they had won seven of their last eight heading into last night. It Last night made you look at that schedule. Let me see these seven of eight. There you go. I was just going <laughs> right? to, Chris. I'm glad you looked. Because only one of the teams of the seven they beat was in the top six in either conference, meaning right. a playoff team. And that was Phoenix without Kevin Durant and DeAndre Ayton. Right. So I mean, we don't, need don't, to just slow the roll a little bit. A little, a little bit. bit. On the and we're not going you, you got to play who's on the schedule. Right. But you got to take a look at the schedule to see are they really world beaters or right. are they beneficiaries of an NBA and a Western Conference where teams are tanking, teams aren't that good, they're not playoff teams, and yep. they should win. Even though against the. Jazz, was it, the other night? Yeah, yeah. They had to yeah. go to double overtime, and they didn't have For two overtime, of their best players. Yep. Overtime, I'm sorry. And right. they have two of their best players. Like, that That was like, why was that? Well, and that's a good point, Rob, because all the talk about 
you know, AD played 42 minutes, then played a back-to-back. LeBron played 38, then a back-to-back. What do you, y'all should have taken care of business. And had the rest you of the night off. Them right. They could have sat. They could have played 20 something minutes. You take care of, took care of business and then relax. And so that's that's just one more reason, Rob, where why the schedule loss doesn't jive. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense because y'all should have went out there and beat up on the jazz the night before. And then, and then you could have rested. Exactly. And been ready right. for the, for an important game that you had with the Clippers. 